Hello YouTube Reloaders! Thanks for watching, Hornady Loader here. My standard disclaimer, I am not an employee of Hornady Manufacturing, nor do I have any interest, financially or otherwise, in the sale of Hornady products. I've been reloading for almost 35 years, and for the last 20 years I've been using Hornady equipment almost exclusively, hence the name Hornady Loader. The Hornady logo is a registered trademark of Hornady Manufacturing, Grand Island, Nebraska. Notice. For those of you who usually don't watch videos all the way to the end, you might want to hang in there on this one. It has a surprise ending. Just when you think it's the same as all the other videos you've seen on the Ornity overall length gauge and the bullet comparator, BAM! I throw in a twist that no other video seems to mention. Today's video will be an examination of a few different products. They all kind of go together, so it made sense to make one video for all of them. First product is the Hornady overall length gauge. Uh, now it comes in two different versions. Uh, one is straight for firearms where you have a straight in access to the uh, chamber of the firearm. Uh, for instance a, a bolt gun like a Remington 700 or an AR-15 uh, where you can remove the bolt and get straight in access. The other version is a uh, curved piece. Uh, does exactly the same thing, works exactly the same way. The difference of course is that it's curved so that you can get access to the chamber on uh, a firearm like a lever action 3030 for example where the straight in version won't work. You can't get a straight in access to the uh, chamber so you can use the curved version and go through the ejection port. Now in order to use the overall length gauge you need another product uh, it's a modified case for the whatever caliber your firearm is chambered for. There's two modifications basically. The first is that the head has uh, been drilled out and the inside has been threaded so that you can thread it onto the end of the overall length gauge. Okay, then you use the gauge to push the case into the uh, chamber. The other modification is that the head of the, or the, I'm sorry, the neck of the uh, cartridge has been expanded slightly so that the bullet can freely move up and down uh, when you push it in and out with the plunger. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So that's the first two products we're, we're, we're going to talk about, the overall length gauge and the modified case. The third product is the Hornady Bullet Comparator. Now you can buy it in two different flavors. Uh, one, it comes with six, one of them comes with six bushings that cover all the more, more popular calibers. Uh, the one that I have here is the version that comes with 14 bushings. And that'll handle just about any caliber you can think of. It also comes with uh, the body, uh, which clips to your the caliper on your uh, the traveling arm of your caliber, caliper. And fourth, there's an optional product. Uh, it's called an anvil. Uh, this would be connected to your uh, stationary arm of your caliper. And it makes it a little easier to square the head up on the caliper arm. Uh, but with or without it, everything works pretty much the same. Uh, you would really only use this with the bullet comparator as it doesn't really work with the overall length gauge uh, very well because of the size. So those are the four products we're going to look, look at. Now both the overall length gauge and the bullet comparator both need some sort of caliper. Whether you have a dial caliper or a digital, entirely up to you, whatever you prefer. But you do need a caliper that measures in thousands in order to use either of these products. So, let's get started with the overall length gauge. The first step is to assemble my overall length gauge. Now, I'll take the modified case from Hornady. This is for 308 Winchester. And I'll screw that onto the end of the overall length gauge. Okay. Then I'll loosen my plunger lock knob 
allows my plunger to move back and forth. And I'll take the bullet that I'm going to be reloading and insert that into the case. And I'll make it a little bit short here so that I don't hit the rifling right off the bat when I put this into the chamber of the gun. And then I'll, I'll tighten the plunger lock knob. Now, what this is going to allow me to do is place the cartridge in the chamber of, of the gun. And I can use the plunger then to, to push the bullet forward until it just contacts the rifling in the bore. Then I would lock, lock that down with the plunger lock knob. Then I would come back and use the bullet comparator to measure the overall length of the bullet or of the cartridge with the bullet in position to where it just hits the lands. Once I have that measurement I can then back that off by a few thousandths to give the bullet a little bit of a running jump or running start into the, the rifling and that'll give me the, the proper overall length of my cartridges for, the, for that particular gun with this particular bullet. If I go to, to load a different bullet type, for instance this is a Hornady AMAX uh, 3, uh, 308 uh, 178 grain bullet. If I change over to say uh, a Hornady match bullet uh, 168 grain, I would have to do this measurement again because the ogive is a little bit different on that bullet. Uh, the length of the bullet is a little bit different. Uh, so every time you change bullets, uh, you have to, to do this measurement over again. Very important. You can't just measure one type of bullet and assume that that's going to be the same for every bullet that you reload for that gun. Also, if you change guns, you're going to have to redo the, the measurement because the uh, amount of, of free bore in, the, in each gun is a little bit different. So you'd have to determine the overall length for each gun with each bullet. So, I've got my overall length gauge assembled now. Next step is to go over to the gun and uh, take a measurement. This is my Remington 700 SPS Tactical with the AACSD barrel. I'm going to be using this gun to uh, measure my overall length for my cartridges here that I want to load for it. I'm working up a load for uh, competition with this rifle. Now, since the plunger on the overall length gauge allows me to push the bullet forward into the uh, rifling of, of the rifle, but it doesn't give me the ability to pull the bullet back out. So if the bullet gets stuck in the rifling or uh, just won't come out when I, uh, when I go to remove the overall length gauge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cleaning rod. Now you can use a wooden dowel or a cleaning rod, anything that won't scratch the, the uh, uh, bore of your rifle. Insert the cleaning rod in the muzzle so that I can use that to push the bullet back out once I've determined where it hits the rifling. Now, I'm going to zoom in on the chamber area of the rifle. I've already removed the bolt. The first thing I'll do is I'll take the overall length gauge and place the cartridge into the chamber. Make sure I get it all the way in there. Then I'll loosen the plunger lock knob and I'll take the plunger and very slowly, very lightly push the bullet forward until I feel it hit the lands of the rifling in the gun. Right there. Now, if I want to try again, or if I want to remove the overall length gauge once I've found my spot, the plunger doesn't have any way to pull the bullet back out. So the bullet may have gotten stuck in the, in the rifling of the uh, bore here. So what I can do is I can use the cleaning rod to push the bullet back a little bit and then I can either try again 
by pushing it forward until I feel it hit the land. And then once I've found the spot where it hits the lands on the rifling, I can tighten my plunger lock knob so that the bullet won't move and I'll, I'll be able to lock that, that uh, length in. And then use my cleaning rod to help push the bullet back out with the cartridge. And there I have the cartridge and with the bullet seated such that it just touches the lands in the rifling. In order to take my measurement, I need to assemble my bullet comparator. First thing I'll do is select a bushing. Now, bushing number 8 has a hole diameter of 300 thousandths. And it fits over the bullet pretty well, but it almost comes to the shank. I like to find a, a bushing that's a little closer to the center of the ogive. Now bushing number seven has a hole diameter of 280 thousandths and it fits right around the middle of the ogive where I like it to be. So I'm going to use bushing number seven. Either one will work, but remember when you're doing your comparisons, when you're when you're seating your bullets uh, during the reloading session, you need to make sure you use the, the same uh, bushing that you used to make your initial measurement. Now I'll, I'll insert the bushing into the body and I'll use the set screw on the end here to lock that in. Now the next step is to put the body onto the dial caliper or the digital caliper. Now when you're using the overall length gauge, and in general I like to have the, the body on the traveling arm of the caliper. Uh, when you're using the headspace gauge or the, the, uh, the other gauges, you can uh, put the body on the, the stationary arm. But for the overall length gauge, it's much easier to do it on the traveling arm. Now one thing you need to know about the body is it has a thin side and a thick side. Now what that allows you to do is, is you can assemble it so that the body is centered on the caliper arm or so that it's offset from the, cali on the caliper arm just a little bit. Now if we look at the overall length gauge you can see that it has a space here for the caliper arm so that you can do your measurements. But the caliper arm is going to be offset a little bit uh, off of the center of the bullet. It, it, the the uh, notch only comes down to the center of the bullet. So the bullet, or the, the cartridge will be offset. So if I put my lock knob on the thin side, that's going to center my body on the caliper. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll show you what, show you what happens. There I have the body and it's centered on the caliper. But now when I try to measure the cartridge, you can see that it's not lined up properly with the body. I would have to actually put it on a little bit diagonal in order to get the bullet to enter the hole in the bushing. And that's going to give me a bad reading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the lock knob from the thin side and I'm going to put it in the hole over here on the thick side. By putting it on the thick side, that will offset the body on the caliper arm. So that now, when I put the 
overall length gauge on the caliper it's now centered with the hole in the body so I can get a decent measurement of course first thing I have to do is close the caliper with the body and the bushing on it zero it out and then do my measurement And I get a measurement of 2.421. 420. It's good to, to move the overall length gauge up and down on the arm so that you get the correct measurement. You need to get the head of the case square on that caliper arm. two point four two zero so with the cartridge set such that the bullet is inserted just to the point where it touches the rifling the overall length from o from the head to the ogive is two point Four two zero. Let's measure that again just to be sure. Two point four two zero. So I'll jot that down. Point four two zero. Now, when I load my three oh eight cartridges, when I do my sizing and I, I uh, insert the bullets, I'll use my heads my bullet comparator to make sure that the bullets are or the cartridges are two point four two zero. Now I can knock a couple thousandths off of that so that I get the bullet gets a little bit of, of running space or, or a running start into the uh, rifling. So if I knock that down by say three thousandths, I would want to make sure that my cartridges are loaded for an overall length from head to ogive of 2.417. So that gives me my overall length for my cartridges for this load, right? Wrong. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Who knows? But why, Hornady Loader? All the other videos and tutorials say that's how to find the overall length for my cartridges. Here's the problem. Here we have our modified case in the chamber of the gun we're loading for using the Hornady Amex bullet that we used in our video. Now, using our bullet comparator, we found that the length from the head of the case to the ogive of this bullet is 2.420 inches. Now, that's actually the sum of two smaller measurements. The first is the head space of the modified case. That's measured from the head of the case to a datum line on the shoulder of the case. Now, using our Hornady headspace gauge, we found that this is 1.621 inches. Now, what's left over, 0.799 inches, is a fixed value measured from that same datum line to the ogive of the bullet. Now, that value is fixed from the day that this gun was manufactured using this particular bullet in this particular gun, it's always going to be the same value. Now here's the same gun, the same Hornady Amex bullet that we used, but this time we're using an actual case. An actual case that we've cleaned and trimmed and sized and prepared for reloading. 
Now, using our Hornady headspace cage and a fire formed case that was fired using this particular rifle, we've determined that 1.628 inches is the proper headspace to use for our cases that we're going to reload for this particular rifle. Of course, the other value is 0.799, the same as with our modified case, because that value is fixed. It will never change as long as we're using a Hornady AMAX bullet. So, the total overall length using an actual case and this bullet is 2.427 inches. That's seven thousandths difference. So, to find the true overall length of your cartridges, I'm first going to take the measured overall length using the Hornady overall length gauge and the Hornady bullet comparator. We're going to use our Hornady headspace gauge and take the headspace of the modified case, subtract that from that value. Then we're going to add the headspace of a resized case. This is the actual cases that you're going to use to reload for this particular rifle. And then you're going to subtract the desired or float uh, running start distance uh, of the uh, bullet. How much running start do you want that bullet to have before it engages the rifling? And that'll give you your true overall length. The overall length that you want to use for uh, reloading these particular cartridges. Now if I had take, simply taken the overall length that I measured from using the overall length gauge and the bullet comparator and subtracted the float or running start distance, I had to come up with 2.390. That's the difference of 7 thousandths. Now if you were trying to give that bullet a 3 thousandths running start, you've got a, twice as much error there in, already built into the equation. Even with the 30 thousandths that I'm using here, that's almost 25% error. So as you can see, you can't go by just what's measured from the Hornady overall length gauge. You have to take into account the actual resized cases that you're going to be loading. Now, let me take a look at this particular number here. Why did I use hundreds and not thousands? I always start with a 30 thousandths running start. I'll create a batch of 10 when I'm working up the load for a new rifle. I'll, I'll create a batch of 10 at 30 thousandths. That'll let me do two five shot groups. And then I'll reduce it by 5 thousandths at a time. I'll make another batch of 10 at uh, 25 thousandths, another batch of 10 at 20 thousandths, and so on. And I'll shoot two groups of five at each distance. And that'll give me an idea of which running start value my particular gun likes best with, this, with that particular load. Now, I know that most videos, most tutorials tell you to use three thousandths. Think about that for a minute. Three thousandths. A human hair ranges anywhere from one thousandths to seven thousandths, depending on the color and the type and the texture and whatnot. Did you know that a blonde hair can be anywhere from one to four thousandths, but a black hair can be as much as seven thousandths? I never knew that. I thought that was interesting. At any rate, we're talking about a hair's breadth, three thousandths of an inch. Can you really, can you really, really consistently crank out round after round after round for hundreds and hundreds of rounds and have each one of them within a hair's breadth of the rifling of your rifle? Can, can it be done? Sure it can. But you should only attempt thousands, like three thousands or two thousands, if you're an experienced reloader. You need to know your equipment. You need to know exactly how to set your dies. You need to know how, how much of a twist of, of the seating stem is going to uh, affect the seating depth of that bullet. If you're a beginner, stick with hundreds. Start with thirty hundreds or thirty thousands and go from there. Don't uh, 
don't try to do two thousandths of an inch from the rifling. If that bullet is touching the rifling, or, or even worse, jammed into the rifling, uh, when you chamber that round, it's going to build up additional pressure in the chamber when you fire that round. That can be potentially dangerous. So if you're a beginner, stick with hundreds, not thousands. You need to have a high quality press and measuring equipment. If you have a $30 press and a tape measure, I guarantee you, you will not be able to seat that bullet two or three thousandths of an inch from the rifling. You need to have good quality equipment, a good quality caliper. You also need to have a set of high quality match grade dies with a micrometer bullet seating stem. If you've got a $40 set of dies, I guarantee you the seating die that comes with that set is not going to be able to consistently give you hair's breadth accuracy. You may get a few of them that way, but once you start cranking them out and you stop measuring every single round, you're going to have a problem. You also need to have a bullet comparator or some way to measure the overall length of your bullet that measures from the head of the case to the ogive of the bullet. If you're trying to measure from the case head to the tip of the bullet with a pair of calipers, it's not going to be consistent. Uh, for instance, that Hornady uh, AMAX bullet has a flexible tip. What happens if you uh, compress the caliper just a little bit too much and, and compress that tip a little bit? That's going to be more than a hair's breadth. So, unless you meet these four requirements, I would stick with hundredths of an inch. Anywhere from, say, 20 hundredths to 40 hundredths. I'm sorry, 20 thousandths to 40 thousandths, not 2 thousandths or 3 thousandths. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it, maybe even learned something. If so, please click the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and happy reloading.